we are going to write a power series expansion for the function 5 over 1 minus 4x squared. And to do that, we just have to match this with our best friend. Here we have the 1 on the top, but the function here we have is the 5. Let's put a 5 on the side. And then, as we can see, these two ones they match. That's good. So it's the minus sign. So I can just say this is the same as 5 times the parentheses, put a 1 on the top, because 5 times this 1 will give us this 5 on the numerator. Over, and for the denominator, the 1 minus will stay the same, and then for the 4x squared, let me just change that in red. So 4x squared in red, that's all. And this part, 1 over 1 minus 4x squared, it's a place that we can just use our best friend, plugging 4x squared into all these x. So let me do that real quick. We have the 5 all the way in the front times the parentheses, and then inside we have the 1 plus the x will be 4x squared. And then this, this term is going to be plus parentheses, instead of x, we will have the 4x squared instead of this parentheses to the second power, and then we continue plus this x is 4x squared now raised to the third power, and then so on forever. And then it's kind of up to you, maybe you can work out like some of the exponents right here, and that will give you the expanded version of the power series. But then we can just look at this form and work with the signal notation. It's a more compact form. So we can look at the phi still in the front, but then the 1 over 1 minus 4x squared, we can just plug in the 4x squared into this x, which is the same as plugging into this x in the sigma notation form. So we will have the sigma when n goes from 0 to infinity. I will open the parentheses, plug in the 4x squared into that x, which is going to be in this parentheses, and then raise that to the nth power. And then we'll work out the exponent right here. So the phi is still all the way in the front, and we have the sigma when n goes from 0 to infinity. And inside, we will have 4 to the nth power, times x to the second power and the rest to the nth power, that will give us x to the 2 n power. So this is pretty much it. That's the form of the power series. And it's kind of like up to you to see if you want to multiply the 5 inside or not. This is fine though, but then if you would like, you can also write this down as sigma when n goes from 0 to infinity. Put a 5 inside. So this is 5 to the first power and it has no n. So we cannot do anything with it, it's just a 5. Times 4 to the nth power, x to the 2 nth power. That's it. Alright, so this is the form. And now let's talk about the radius and also the interval of convergence. And then right here, as you can see, because we use the our best friend, we're just plugging by doing algebra, plugging the full x square into our best friend. That's all. So the radius of convergence. Um, we can do the same right here. This right here is going to be true for absolute value, and we're plugging 4x squared into this x, which is going to be in this parenthesis, into this absolute value, not parenthesis, absolute value. 4x squared, and then we said this is going to be less than 1 by doing the same right here. However, we have to do slightly more algebra, because for the radius of convergence, we must isolate the absolute value of x. Here we have the 4, it's the same as your tail of 1 outside, and then absolute value of x squared, this is less than 1. And now of course we can divide by 4 on both sides, we can say this is the same as absolute value of x squared is less than 1 over 4, right? And now, this part, Absolute value of x squared. Let me just show you a couple more steps for that. This is saying we have absolute value of x times x, okay? Which is the same as saying absolute value of x times absolute value of x. This is the same as saying absolute value of x and then raised to a second power. And this is just like a quick proof on why the absolute value of x squared is the same as absolute value of x and then squared. And then this is still less than 1 over 4. And then the reason I want to show you this is because now we can square root both sides. And then we get to just 
cancel the square and cancel the square root and we can isolate the absolute value of x to be less than the positive version of 1 half we do not include the plus minus so this is what we can do because absolute value of x is always positive when we square root both sides we just you know, take the positive square root also we didn't need to worry about the inequality symbol at all and with this being said we know that the radius of convergence will be one half so that will be it and finally let's talk about the interval of convergence but we have to know this first right isn't it so this is centered at zero because here we can see this is x minus zero right we are not subtracting any value directly from the x so the center is at zero the radius of convergence is uh, one half so that means we can go to the left one half that will be negative one half here and then pass the one half right here anything inside right the x value inside of negative one half and one half will make um, this true and then because we use our good friend right our best friend along the way our best friend didn't include endpoints so right here we didn't need to include the endpoints as well we usually have to check for the convergence at the endpoints by using one of the tests that we learned but then because once again we're just doing algebra plugging the full x square into our best friend and then because we know our best friend didn't include the endpoints so we don't need to include the endpoints for sure the only case that we have to worry about the convergence at the endpoints when we use our best friend along with differentiation or integration then in that case we have to double check the convergence at the endpoint but then at the moment this right here is it